AI literacy in the organization, I'll go back to what Albert Einstein said, there, there is no knowledge, but that through experience, you know, it's, it's important, especially for people that don't have that citizen data science background to understand what AI is, to sign up for a course or six, to get a certificate or three, to understand the basics so they understand what to engage with. But if you can't start building GPTs in OpenAI 4.0, you can't actually start implementing apps and you understand, you know, what the agentic workflow looks like and how to solve it in your world, no amount of certificates will help you in the real world. You need to play with and experiment with generative often enough to be so frustrated that you feel like you're yelling at a real person and be so thrilled that it's amazing that's, that the technology works. If you don't feel that emotion on either side, both sides, then you haven't been doing it enough. And that, that's true at the board level, at the C-suite level, the executive leadership level, and the rank and file. Every single person in the organization needs to feel that. And until they do, they can't progress forward. Great, Matt. I love that lit litmus test. If you're not frustrated, you haven't looked hard enough. Uh, Gregory. Yeah, so um, first thing I would do actually is I would make a mandatory KPI for the company starting at the top regarding AI literacy. Formalize it tie it to compensation, tie it to bonuses, tie it to promotions. That is how you will accomplish something here. And along with that, you also need to support it through the use of empowering AI champions or cross-functional mentoring across different departments, um, formalized training, even, even down to the point of boot camps or foundational courses. Um, these types of things are, are incredible at really getting people up to that basic level, um, implementing a formal community and networking within the company. And again, I'll, I'll sneak back to the whole agentic workflow thing. Um, people need to start thinking a little bit differently. So the training also needs to go in there. But for me, the KPIs are number one. And uh, to, to tie back to what Matt was saying, hands on, I think hackathons are fantastic for something like that, allowing individuals like myself, a non-technical user, to really get a chance to interact with um, some of the more technical people. And we both learn from each other. That's great. I think imposing those types of uh, internal credentials, that that's a great idea to push this forward. Uh, thanks, Gregory. Now on to Donald. Yeah, thanks so much. I think there's really important to make a distinction between personal literacy and organizational literacy. In this case, you know, personal, if we focus on personal literacy, we're in danger of creating a kind of medieval environment where there's a small number of highly literate people who become the, the elite uh, users in this case, because they master the art of literacy, as opposed to say in the modern world where everybody has a reasonable amount of literacy, which therefore enables our organizations and our communities to function better. So we need to really look not just in terms of baseline literacy but in terms of making this distinction between are we trying to improve the overall literacy of the organization slightly but therefore dynamically and exponentially increasing the value to the organization or are we focusing on individual literacy which enables a small elite number of users and if we're looking at that organizational literacy that's going to be driven by awareness and usage and being very, very transparent about the use of AI in an organization. Because once people are aware of it, it's just like learning to read and write. You can go through your ABCs and learn your alphabet, but unless you have reading material, you're not going to become literate. In the same way, we need to expose people more and more, but in a conscious and transparent way so they understand how AI is working in their organization, how it's being used. And it's that, that um, engagement with AI which is going to drive literacy much more than any formal training, which really only provides the entry point to literacy. Great, Donald. I think a problem with elitism of the sort of power imbalance I think you're kind of implying is augmented also by that elitism leading to that disconnect, right? I think it leads to lack of function. Projects to generally, in, at least in the predictive space, don't get deployed successfully, again, because of that disconnect tech biz. So I think that's one way to frame what we need to accomplish with better education. Yeah, if um, I could just kind of jump on that one. I think one of the things we need to think about training is we often use training as the wrong kind of verb in industry. We talk about training our employees as if we're applying training to them rather than training as something that they do for themselves. We we train our staff rather than our, traft, our staff train themselves. We need to turn that equation around. Interesting, yeah, the agency of that. Daniel. 
Uh, I, I've seen firsthand like the benefits of like formal training in organization, having conducted these for some of the largest orgs uh, on the planet. And like, it's been, it's been fairly uh, uh, powerful and positive for those organizations, just in terms of general literacy around artificial intelligence, particularly discussions around things like ethics, legal and compliance, as well as understanding, uh, you know, just basic infrastructure requirements. Uh, uh, interestingly enough, though, General Assembly put out a, a very large survey finding that something like three out of five uh, VP directors and above uh, have taken uh, in or orgs today have not taken any kind of formal AI training. So there's still like a fairly big uh, gap there. I do have a very uh, uh, strong opinion on like who should go through these uh, outside of like the data science and ML engin engineering community. Like we need to upskill procurement and compliance and legal right now. Like they need to happen super super fast and then as a i might be a little biased because i have a background in product management like i think like product managers are like middle mini ceos of parts of the org right like they need to get upskilled on this very very quickly because they're the ones with kind of that fifty thousand foot view into everything that's happening and then on Donald's point, just around society, like I mentioned before, kind of the societal knowledge, like there was a talk a while back of, of, of you know, like the internet as a basic human right. And I'm kind of wondering uh, uh, from, from Donald's kind of comments here, if we're going to start seeing conversations around like AI as a basic human right. And when that access becomes ubiquitous and individuals are able to experiment, uh, we're, that's when we're going to start truly building that societal knowledge that I talked about before. Uh, my dad always told me to plan the work and work the plan. And kind of what the other panelists have been saying is you need to create a learning plan and that needs to happen at the organizational level. And that needs to happen at the individual level. At the organizational level, that might look more of a strategy, but essentially AI works as a system. If you can't think of AI as a system, then you don't really know where you need to train your employees or your employees need to develop that learning plan. AI should be the heart of the system if you're correctly trying to implement it. If you're trying to do point solutions, those often aren't scalable and it's going to lead to failure. And then that impacts learning because people don't want to learn from failure. They want to be successful. Um, so that growth mindset at the organizational level will trickle down to the employees. The employees will be encouraged to produce their own learning plan. Learning plans don't have to be complex. They don't have to be technical. They can be short or long term. And essentially, you could use AI to do it if you wanted to, if you're comfortable with that. You can do a gap analysis of your skills. You can load up your resume. These are the skills I have. After you use your human skills, learning where you want to go, talking to other individuals, you can map out that plan. And then you can either reskill and go into a, a domain that maybe you didn't think of, or you can just upskill and get more efficient at what you're doing.